Hi, I'm LJ Boffo, and I wanted to give you an introduction to me uh, as I'm an instructor for your class. So I am from Seattle, Washington. I've been teaching for more than 10 years, both at Shoreline Community College and Seattle Central College. I have an education with a Bachelor of Arts, uh, AAS and graphic design certificates in web design and web development, and a master's in education, learning, and technology. Clearly, I like going to school. I also have, during the course of my work life, over 20 years of permanent contract, temp, freelance, and pro bono work. I'm trained as a graphic and web designer, but I also have a lot of administrative skills. So things like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Access Database, your uh, Adobe Creative Suite, web design, and so on. I have real life experience um, and work history in those, and I use that uh, and keep up on my skills in order to teach classes. Now, I fell into teaching kind of by accident, but I discovered right away that I really liked it. I'm a fairly organized person, and I love sharing information and helping open doors for folks the same way as I felt when I went to community college three different times for three different programs. I like uh, sharing information, finding new information, working with other students, working to learn more, and I'm constantly trying to keep learning and growing even now. And I love the topics in business technology, in design, in information technology, and in related industries. And my goal is usually to try to give as much useful information to help folks build skills and have takeaways that they could use in other courses and in wherever they choose to move in their career. So my mission for teaching includes working on providing you with current skills, training for a competitive workplace. So I want you to be able to walk out of my class feeling confident that you've got some skills that you could take to any workplace and build on with the help of your employers and their own specific systems. And also to be able to use them in school and in your um, own life. I also try to work to encourage a professional workflow and communications techniques so that students can come out with an expectation of uh, good communications with instructors and potentially with supervisors and managers, a, a good understanding of time management. So there are reasons why there are due dates to assignments and no extensions and other things that reflect a lot of what you'll experience in the workplace. And then just trying to help students find ways to help themselves to learn to learn, to learn like learning and to feel comfortable not having answers, but learning how to keep looking for them and asking each other and other people for assistance and ideas and input. So I, I think learning's fun. It doesn't have to be a, a, a drudge. I really enjoy it, and I, I really hope you will too. Now, my me methods, um, I have a lot of them. I mean, I really want folks to enjoy learning as much as I do. And I try to keep in mind that a lot of people don't really like exams, and they don't like team projects. And for the courses I teach currently, neither of those are necessary. I tend to prefer assignments where you get to practice what you're learning, demonstrate your skills, learn from mistakes, and keep growing and doing better and just building your learning up on that. I try to focus on universal design and open materials as much as I can. So recent courses I've taught, uh, I've taught, I've actually written open educational resource books, including one for Excel and then one for um, business technology essentials. And they're free books. I try to recognize and try to reach different learning styles because students tend to take in information differently. Usually in courses um, in college, you are always going to have a fair amount of reading. It's part of the nature of college, and that's kind of the same with my courses. But I also try to offer videos and alternative links and um, also for students to help each other using a discussion board. I try to prepare materials with an eye to, an, to accessibility because different people are approaching um, their, their work and their content with different abilities. 
And um, I also try to offer various demos to help people learn what they should be seeing and experiencing when trying to build the skills. Um, so, you know, I tend to be available daily by email and I tend to respond fairly quickly. Um, however, I will usually always take one full weekend day off, just like everyone else. And often I usually take Friday nights off, too, because who wants to be working on a Friday night? We want to be uh, enjoying ourselves. I will have an online office time each week. I use Zoom. And right now I'm a fully online instructor and I have fully online office hours and I don't come to the campus for any of the courses that I teach or any of the office hours. Um, and I do appreciate well-intentioned feedback from students. So if you're going through an assignment and something truly isn't making sense, the words seem jumbled or the example isn't quite working right, and you've tried it a couple of times, let me know. I do make mistakes. I try not to, but I do. And I'm happy to learn about them so that I can fix them and make it even better for students the next time around. So please feel free to ask me questions when something isn't working quite right and, and let me know. So I will usually try to have information as accessible as possible. I teach with Canvas, which is a learning management tool that's used across Washington State. It's a great tool. And I try to keep it lean and mean in terms of not having too much that you have to go through or too many sections that can be confusing. Um, I'll have a separate video that goes to what an average Canvas course of mine looks like. But I try to have all the information you're going to need on there and or links to it so that at any time of the day or night you're doing work online, you can access what you need to. Now, some of my videos like this one will be based on PowerPoints. So you'll hear my voice over for audio and you'll see some text if you want to get some more detail and the nice picture of cats here. Um, other videos will be me actually demonstrating specific skills or concepts or showing you different things. I will um, strive to have closed captioning in my videos, although I have redone my videos recently, so this closed captioning is a little slow at this point in time. Um, however, they're all in YouTube, and YouTube should have pretty good basic um, closed captioning available um, there. And then um, I also try to make my video tasks and actions to be very self-evident as to what I'm doing. But you may have to look at something a couple of times in order to, um, um, to, to, to access it, to get it. You're absolutely free in YouTube to slow down a video if you need to watch it more slowly. Or if you're just trying to get a gist of what's going on, you're always free to speed the video back up. So in videos, I will usually try to give you visual examples to help you um, go through your coursework. I'll usually introduce the topic. I'll try to demonstrate a main method of how something is done or how to view or accomplish something. I'll explain details as I can. I may offer an alternative or two, but I try not to do too much of that because I don't want to confuse people by thinking that they're actually additional steps to the core alternative or to the core uh, method. And then I'll try to pause on occasion so you have a good spot to pause the video, absorb, take a couple notes, try it, etc. Learning styles. Now, learning styles or multiple intelligences tend to be something that uh, folks think about how people absorb information. We're all a little different. Some people really get a lot out of reading and they just go totally to sleep when they hear lectures. I go to sleep when I hear lectures. Other people do enjoy a, a lecture as long as there's a lot of visual support to it, to give examples and to be able to ask questions from. Other people are more kinesthetic learners. They can see an example, but they really have to just try it and keep trying it until they actually work through it themselves. And other people take a lot of notes and then review the notes in their own terms and look for supporting information. There's no one way to absorb information. In my courses, I try to provide different ways you can absorb the same kind of information. Finally, I've been a student several times. And so for a student, I've been a student and I've become a teacher. So I have tips for you as students um, and especially in, in terms of working with me. 
I like learning and I really love going to college. <laughs> I went several times. Um, I hope folks in this class actually want to be here. I know sometimes folks take a class because it's required by their degree or they're trying to fill in credits. There's all sorts of reasons. I know that. At the same time, you're going to have a much easier and more interesting time in any of your courses if you find a reason why you want to be there. Uh, willingness to learn the skills. You don't have to fall in love with the subject or plan to live with it forever, but any skills you can learn, learning how to learn, learning how to like learning, learning how to ask questions and look for additional info will always serve you well in life. When I was a student, I learned that instructors are busy people with busy lives. So instructors have reasons for due dates. They have reasons why they may not give extensions in their courses, why they have specific assignment goals and so on. A college will have very specific objectives that instructors need to meet for students' skills to mean something when you get the grade, when you get the certificate or degree, and when you take it into the workplace. Um, and instructors do the best that they can to model the professional environment that you may be going into, the various skills and expectations and communications, techniques. So these are reasons why instructors will have various rules and expectations in a course. So I had these when I was a student, whether it was studying history or studying graphic design or web development or the master's degree. And um, I have those expectations of students as well. Another thing I learned as a student is to really work on managing my time. Because you have to budget your time so carefully between working and going to school and family life. I understand that. All of your instructors do. But I learned to manage my time to use the course resources that were provided for me and to find more if I needed them and even share those with the instructor. I learned to communicate regularly with my instructors so I, they knew I was there, they knew when I had questions, they knew when I was stumped on something, and they knew if there was a concept that I got and I really appreciated something that they shared because it, it clicked. So I, I, I believe in you know communicating with your instructors, letting them know you're alive. I also learned that it really is important to get my assignments done on time or even early. So I always tended to be a bit of an early bird on that and to not have excuses if I couldn't get something in. You know, things do happen, but overall, um, I just, you know, those are things I learned. So this is what I expect with students that work with me. And then finally, as a student, I really learned to adapt to different course expectations. Different instructors have different methods. They have different ways they'll share information. We all try to do the best we can. And one of the interesting things about being a student and one of the great things that prepares you for being a lifelong student and for any workplace you're going into is to learn to be nimble, to be able to adapt to different expectations. And part of adapting is asking questions. Part of it is trying different things. Part of it is being curious and looking for additional info um, besides what you get from the course so that you can you know, really grow your learning. I also learned how important it is to save and organize and back up my coursework files. There is there, I, I just always save everything in more than one place, saving your files, naming them in a way that you can understand what the file is you need to get and putting them in a place where you can always find them and submit the right assignment in the right assignment submission area and ask the questions you need of the specific assignment you need. Organizing your files is really important and saving them and always backing up a copy or two. I also just learned all sorts of techniques to be responsible for my own learning and success. So as an instructor, I'm here to guide you, but you're the one who's going to need to take action and to manage your time and to be motivated to ask questions of other students, of the discussion board, to let me know if something's not working, and to just dive into the materials, really work through them, get everything you can out of them, find additional resources if you need them. So I hope that gives you enough information about me and how I work and what experience I bring. I hope you enjoy every class of mine that you get to participate in. Thanks very much and see you soon.